much for staying with us here at CNN News 18. You're watching The Right Stand. I am Ridhima Bhatnagar. Now, according to CBI sources, Bihar may join the list of opposition states to have withdrawn general consent to the CBI. Sources are saying that Nitish has said that this is the right time to withdraw this general consent. Now, remember, this comes just days after CBI raids against Lalu Yadav's aides in the Land for Jobs scam. Last week, as the Nitish Kumar-led Mahagadbandan was all set to prove its majority in the Assembly, the shadow of the Land for Jobs scam revisited the RJD, with CBI raiding the residences of two RJD leaders in connection with this case. Now, according to CBI sources, the Land for Jobs scam in Bihar could be worth 100 crore rupees and the investigation has found 250 land deeds. These land deeds were reportedly of job aspirants who sold or gifted their land to Lalu Yadav's family or their close associates allegedly to get jobs in the railways when he was the minister. Remember, the CBI initiated an inquiry in 2021 into the charge that when Lalu Prasad Yadav was a railway minister during 2004 to 2009, several people were appointed as substitutes to the Group D posts and zones in exchange for land. According to the CBI, Lalu Prasad Yadav, his wife Rabri, along with his daughters, were given land plots as bribes from some people who were recruited in the railways. CBI investigations have stated that Lalu's family acquired over 1 lakh square feet of land this way for just 26 lakh when the actual value of the land is pegged at over 4.39 crore. Unsurprisingly then, the RJD has slammed the CBI raids and called it vendetta politics by the BJP-led centre. But first, let's break down the details in terms of why are we understanding now by the means of sources that you would want Bihar to join many other opposition states as far as withdrawing the general consent to the CBI is concerned. What has been the trigger and what really was the modus operandi as far as this scam is concerned? Let's break down those details. What we are picking up by the means of sources is that the land for job scam could be worth 100 crores. What we are also understanding is over 1,000 complaints of those who fraudulently got that job in the railways. What we are also now understanding that there is proof of aspirants selling or gifting lands to Yadavs in lieu of these jobs as far as the railways was concerned. What really was the modus operandi? This is where things get extremely interesting. There was a specialised cell that was set up in Lalu's home when he was the railway minister. What we're also now understanding is that this particular cell that we're talking about, this would run the jobs racket like a turnkey project. So multiple people were involved in this. The cell would also then procure fake educational degrees for these aspirants and the other documents that were needed as well. So from documents to training, all the help was given to these aspirants only when the amount that was discussed was actually paid. But the larger question at this point of time is, with all these allegations being made, what is the messaging that is being sent out as far as this new alliance is concerned? And more importantly, what is going to be the position of Nitish Kumar? Now I want to talk to you about some past examples of the position that we've seen in the past as far as Nitish Kumar is concerned. Let's begin with 2005. Forged image of an anti-corruption crusader. So from then to now, how is he going to tackle all these allegations that are being made? In 2009, Nitish promised to reward those who expose corrupt babus. So with these allegations against Alu Prasad and his family, what is going to be the narrative as far as Nitish Kumar is concerned? In 2017, and this is where it gets extremely exciting, he broke away from the RJD over corruption charges. Now that they've come back together, how is he going to still ensure that you have a corruption-free tag? He blamed the RJD in 2017 of corruption under shield of secularism. So this is the question that we'll take to our guests in just a bit. But let's go back to 2018 as well. At that time, you had, he had accused RJD of betraying Bihar by enriching one family. And this is exactly what the BJP is now picking up as far as its criticism. In 2020, JDU manifesto states zero tolerance for crime and corruption as well. So the larger question that we want to debate as far as this evening is concerned is this. Can Nitish Kumar really ignore the corruption storm? You can use our hashtag and get involved in our debate. It's hashtag 
MGB blocks CBI or the Margaret Bandhan blocks CBI. Let me also now bring in our guest to take this discussion forward. We have the national spokesperson of the BJP, Guru Prakash Paswan. We have Mayank Sinha, leader of the JDU. We have SM Anwar Hussain, senior RJD leader. We have former CBI officer S. Kumar. And we also have the executive editor of the Pioneer, Naveen Upadhyay. Good to have all of you on the broadcast with us. Mayank Sinha, let me begin with you. Why would Nitish Kumar say, and this is what we're picking up by the means of sources, that this is the right time to withdraw the general consent as far as the CBI is concerned? Now you read the section 5. What the section uh, 6 says? Section 6 says, Consent of state government to exercise of power and jurisdiction. And the Delhi Special Police Establishment Act says that, what the section 6 says? If there is a general, there is a need for the consent of the state government. If there is any investigation in the state, we need to take the consent. So, usme unhone kya haan bola hai kuch bhi? Withdraw karenge haan. CBI take needs the consent for the state government. Ye toh aapka law keh raha hai. It says the law. And mujhe ek baat batao. With the Prevention of Money Laundering Act 2002, it comes in the Finance Ministry of Finance and now it comes under in the Ministry of Home Affairs. So, you have not asked that you have to take the Finance Ministry of Finance and the Ministry of Home Affairs. Why did you have to debate that? No, there was also a debate. Today, I just want to ask you this. Why the debate is going on on this topic? कि CBI entry ban in the state of Bihar already nine states ban earlier in the CBI entry in the state of Bihar CBI entry in the state तो आप अभी ये अभी तो हमने कोई विड्रॉ नहीं किया और हमारे पार्लियामेंट्री बोर्ड के अध्यक्ष ने भी ये बात बोला है कि इस तरह की कोई मीटिंग ही नहीं हुई है ban करने के लिए नहीं पर हमें सोर्स की तरफ से ये पता चल रहा है कि अब बिहार भी उन ऑपोजिशन स्टेट्स के लिस्ट में ज्वाइन हो सकता है जैसे छत्तीसगढ़ है, बंगाल है, राजस्थान है, तो टाइमिंग एक्चुअली क्वेश्चनेबल बन जाता है कि अगर बिहार अब कहता है कि ये सही समय है जनरल कंसेंट विड्रॉ करने के लिए, तो टाइमिंग क्वेश्चनेबल हो जाता है क्योंकि पिछले दो हफ्तों से as far as these entire raids are concerned, the allegations are very, very grave. What is the position as far as the RJD is concerned? This new alliance coming together of Nitish Kumar, Tejasvi Yadav and others was seen to be a new chapter. What is the position as far as corruption is concerned? See, the more important thing to debate is the timing of the these raids and this clearly shows that these raids are coming out of political vendetta BJP has gone really crazy its leadership has gone berserk they are revengeful they were not ready to this kind of change in the Bihar political scene and they see this new alignment of new alignment of political forces as a big threat for them, not only in Bihar, but at national level. That's why this kind of reaction is coming. You see, it's a question of credibility of CBI. The credibility of Prime Minister, Home Minister itself has no, undergone but a I great want to decline. understand, these FIRs date them, back let, let to me speak, 2017 please. Let me to 18. Please let me come here. I'll, I'll, I'm uh, letting you complete, sir. I just want your response to that. When you say this is vendetta politics, this is misuse of agencies, these FIRs are dated back to 2017 and 18. That time, you were in an alliance as far as the BJP is concerned. Today, when you walked away as far as the BJP alliance is concerned, they are now misusing the agencies. Is that what you're saying? Okay, okay, okay. The FIRs were launched in, uh, uh, in 18, 2018, as you said. Am I correct? Or hmm. 1998? What do you say? When were these FIRs launched? 
I just gave you the date, sir. When were these FIRs lodged? Then you just told me that these FIRs were lodged many years before. So I want to know the exact year. Which year? When their alliance was with the BJP. So that's why I'm saying the time questioning me. as far as vendetta politics is concerned. Doesn't that become convenient then? No, no, see. My question is that when FIR was lodged, why that time, uh, where the B uh, CBI and ED were sleeping that time? Why didn't they check action now? Now, when this, uh, this new political juncture or uh, you can say a turning point, the CBI are coming into picture. The problem is the credibility of CBI and ED itself. See, CBI and ED are constitutional authorities. We accept that. But okay. their credibility has been badly damaged and so that's why everybody is suspecting the move and it's not me it's the whole Bihar and those who keep an eye on Bihar politics they understand that CBI and EDs are continuously being misused in India not in, in the opposition state hmm. wherever there is a government ruled by uh, I mean there is a government of opposition parties CBIs and EDs are there hmm. why don't you see any red in a state where BJP is involved. Okay. Why don't you see the rates on BJP leaders, on BJP parliamentarians, on BJP okay. ministers, and uh, and those, uh, I mean, uh, 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 businessmen uh, who are related with BJP. Mm. Okay. Do you think all the corruption lies in opposition parties only? There's okay. no corruption in BJP? No, I will take that question to Guru Prakash in so just a bit. This? But I just want to understand, are you denying Everything as far as these allegations are concerned because I just put out the modus operandi when I started the show and just look at the details that we are picking up. There were almost 1000 complaints of those who fraudulently got jobs in railways. The number could increase as well. The proof is with the CBI as far as these aspirants selling or gifting their land to the first family, the Yadavs, in lieu of jobs as far as the railways was concerned. But look at how this entire setup was made. A special cell was created in Lalu Prasad's house when he was the railway minister. Multiple people were involved. Fake documents were created. When the payment was made, promises of that job was given. Are you denying all these allegations? Mad Madam, this is a, this is, Madam, these are allegations only. They have not been proved. Okay, so you're saying these are only allegations, this allegations is vendetta? Are only in the, um, hmm. Allegations are only in the public domain. Hmm. Its evidence and proofs are not there. Okay, okay. So, uh, the ED itself, the CBI itself hmm. has become the uh, centers uh, 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 Modi's Fair enough. Of, Point taken that these are only Amisha allegations. The, the CBI. And you feel that there is a misuse of yes. agencies. Guru Prakash Kamen, this is not just the JDU or the RJD saying this today, but opposition parties across the country today feel that the timing of when these raids are happening with various political parties is questionable. <coughs> they feel today the entire setup today is lopsided because there is a misuse of central agencies. Uh, Radhima, thank you so much for uh, having me on the debate. We have to understand a couple of things. And uh, I was patiently listening to my friends from the Rashtri Janta Dal and Janta Dal United. The biggest travesty the biggest travesty you see, it is the same Mr. Nitish Kumar who used to say that there will be no compromise when it comes to corruption, crime and communalism. It was Mr. Nitish Kumar who was vociferous in his fight against corruption. In 2017, we don't need to go back a lot of years, but only in 2017. It was precisely on the same grounds, on the same case, on the same allegations that uh, Mr. Nitish Kumar left the Mahagat Bandar. He accused the Rashtri Janta Dal leaders, but what has happened now? That is point number one. Point number two, Raduma, we must understand that on August 15 this year, Honorable Prime Minister has given a clarion call that we will go all out against corruption and dynasty. Corruption and dynasty are the twin cancers that are affecting the public life, the politics of the country, but we'll go against it. This is a very comfortable argument mm. that there is a misuse of agency, ED ka misuse ho raha hai, CBI ka misuse ho raha hai. There is clear cut evidence in public domain. Public domain mein ye jankari hai ki railway mandri rehte hai, bara logo ko naukri di gai, aur us naukri ke evas mein zameen liya gaya. Aur ye zameen ke owner lalu yadav pariyar ke hi log hote hai. Aisa ki hota hai. Dousra aarot hai ki IRCTC hotel mein bhi aapne scam kiya. Toh prashn ye khada hota hai. 
जब शुचिता की बात होती जब इंटेग्रिटी की बात होती तो ये कह देना बहुत सरल है आप ही लोग कहते हैं कि संविधान को बचाना है वी हैव टू सेव द कॉन्स्टिट्यूशन बट यू आर द सेम पीपल हु आर रिपीटेडली सेइंग कि संविधान के संस्थान जो है वो आज कॉम्प्रोमाइज है ये कैसा लॉजिक है चिट भी मेरी पर गुरु इस समय सवाल ये है कि इफ द ईडी और द सीबीआई हैड ऑल दिस इंफॉर्मेशन इज एविडेंस व्हाई वाजंट दिस पुट आउट इन द पब्लिक डोमेन अर्लियर व्हाई इज इट हैपनिंग नाउ एंड लास्ट वीक व्हेन इट हैपेंड वाज अ डे व्हेन द मार्केट बंधन वाज एक्चुअली सपोज्ड टू प्रूव इट्स मेजॉरिटी इन द असेंबली एंड दैट इज व्हाट इज बीइंग क्वेश्चन एज़ फार एज़ द ओपोजिशन इज कंसर्न रिदमा रिदमा यू आर अ वेरी सीजन जर्नलिस्ट एंड यू हैव बीन फॉलोइंग पॉलिटिक्स फॉर क्वाइट सम टाइम एज़ फार एज़ द नंबर्स आर कंसर्न there is nothing there is no doubt rjd had the numbers mahagathbandhan had the numbers 164 164 in the house of 224 there was absolutely no question of timing it is just a matter of regular proceeding and in terms of cbi and ed let me make this very clear our friend from the rashtriya janata dal he was saying that wo parrot ban gaye hain in 2013 justice b m loda called the cbi a caged parrot in hearing on coal block allocation case और उनके साथ जब जिनकी सरकार की कांग्रेस थी वो आप आपके साथ आज सरकार चला रहे हैं आप यूपीए के पार्ट हैं कांग्रेस के शासन में सीबीआई को केस्ड पैरेट बोला जाता है तब आपको अपेक्टी नहीं होती है और अब आप सीबीआई को केस्ड पैरेट बोल रहे हैं राजनीति करिए लेकिन राजनीति के नाम पे संविधान पे प्रश्न चिन्ह खड़ा करना संवैधानिक संस्थानों पर प्रश्न चिन्ह खड़ा करना बंद करिए आप चुनाव हारते हैं चुनाव आयोग खराब हो जाता है करप्शन का इंक्वायरी होता है सीबीआई खराब हो जाता है रेट पड़ता है ईडी खराब हो जाता है आई खराब हो जाता है this selectivity is doing a lot of hmm. damage to constitutional values okay. and the constitutional ethos okay i'll come back to the political representatives in just a bit i want to bring in s kumar who's a former cbi officer in the conversation as well what we today discussing is that what we are picking up by the means of sources that bihar could join this long list of opposition states and withdraw their general consent as far as the cbi is concerned while the margaret bandhan and the alliance partners can continue to question the timing as far as these raids are concerned what i want to understand from you in a case like this since the investigation is already begun does it really have any retrospective impact or effect as far as the case is concerned well the the case uh, belongs to at least uh, say 30 20 30, 39 2009 when dalu prasad was the railway minister the case was registered again on the substantial piece of evidence of transfer of land for job the evidence has cropped up the persons who have transferred their land and they have got job the fir was registered in 2017 18 when the alliance was already there with the bjp yeah. nitesh kumar was in bjp so there is no question of any kind of vendetta politics or uh, any kind of favor this is a constitutional authority cbi has been established under delhi special police establishment act by government of india under the constitution now the cases have been registered under prevention of corruption act and indian penal code and the prevention of money laundering act so if the any party or any person who is uh, aggrieved by this he should go to the court and get the case if i are quest mm. if the facts are substantial there the evidence is there that the agency will under the law investigate there is the uh, honorable high court honorable supreme court above the uh, a constitutional guarantor and they are supervising all the law and order situation in india if anything goes wrong they should approach the courts and get the fir quest if there is an evidence and it is substantial and clinching evidence then the investigation will ru- uh, reveal that and the charge sheets will be filed there is nothing like that uh, the constitutional authority the hmm. president of india with his consent the cbi has been established and it is acting under the law the fact that uh, the, the case was registered in 17 2017 and now the investigation is taken up it is something like politicization and i would say it is a bad timing okay. of course that is but, correct but, coming but back the, the offense is the gravity sir, of offense the gravity i would say gra- no, does no, it have gravity, retrospective impact gravity of gravity of offense is not uh, somehow liquefied it is it is as grave as that okay that the rights of the right people the candidates of bihar candidates of bihar who were genuine hmm. aspirants were taken away by some persons in collusion with the lalu prasad yadav and family yeah. who took the land and gave the uh, job to the persons who were not qualified hmm. or who were not uh, uh, entitled to get those jobs by taking away the rights of lakhs of people of bihar and uh, india yeah 
द करप्शन इज अ वेरी बैड थिंग वंस अपॉन ए टाइम आई गॉट लॉस्ट इन दी एल एफ इन क्लेव ऑफ गुड़गांव एंड आई सॉ द हाउसेज सच ए बिग लेविश हाउसेज वन सिंगल हाउस वुड कॉस्ट नॉट लेस देन फाइव टेन करोर्स ए सिंगल बाबू ऑफ इंडिया ए क्लर्क इज हाउस इज रेडेड एंड हंड्रेड ऑफ करोर्स और टेन करोर्स कैश इज फाउंड the corruption is a big issue hmm. and it is taking away the lives of the it is bearing on the lives of common man it's Mike very Sina, bad thing don't and you think this right, is a big concern right, as far as this India alliance is concerned that the allegation is that you've taken somebody who was deserving and given someone else a job as far as a quid pro quo is concerned yeah oh, it is the british thing before the honorable court my my my, hmm. my, my time i i will say the the matter is pending before the honorable court and uh, the fir is also registered the central investigation agency uh, right now sleep uh, from the last 5 years ha eh? aap ye mujhe batao hmm. ki bjp is totally misused the cbi fir was registered in 2017 18 are या तो आई आई नो कि एफ आई आर वाज रजिस्टर्ड ऑन 2017 तो व्हाई द इन्वेस्टिगेशन एजेंसी नॉट कंप्लीटेड द इन्वेस्टिगेशन फ्रॉम द लास्ट फाइव इयर्स माय फर्स्ट क्वेश्चन इज दैट व्हाई द सेंट्रल इन्वेस्टिगेशन एजेंसी टेक द राइट टाइम टू दैट टाइम टू स्टार्ट द इन्वेस्टिगेशन बिकॉज बीजेपी इज स्केयर्ड द स्ट्रेंथ ऑफ द महागठबंधन राइट नाउ That's But why sir, he is using the power of the, the CBI and ID. The question for you will be that if there is nothing to hide, my, my you one, can cooperate my, with I, the investigative agency. So I, I, I completely deny the fact that Bihar will I, actually not withdraw no, no, consent I, I, as far I, as the CBI I, I is concerned. Asked, no, no, no. I'm, I'm. What I, I told to you is the matter is pending before the honourable court. If any such matter pending before the honourable okay. court, I am not right to title speak before okay. it. You're not thing, giving me a direct answer. I'm trying to London understand friend, which way Bihar no, no. will go. Let me bring in no, no, Navin no, no, Upadhyay no, no, also. No, no, no. I'll I'm, come I'm back to you. Bhai, I'll come back to you. Navin Upadhyay. No, no, What just, I'm trying just, to understand just, is from just, 2017 no, no, one, one, when no, no, Nitish Kumar one, one, said we will break ties with the RJD because we see a corruption tag with them. To 2022, days after this alliance comes together, there are multiple raids and enough evidence is what the CBI is saying to carry forward the investigation, which could possibly lead. to maybe some arrest in days to come as well if nitish kumar doesn't come out and give a clarity as far as what the position of the party is and if he withdraws this general consent as far as the cbi is concerned doesn't then that bring a question mark as to what is the messaging being sent out by this magad bandhan i think see i think well, let us make one thing very clear that this even if they withdraw the general consent it will not have a retrospective it will not be effective from retrospective uh, timing because ongoing cases will continue to be probed first thing and even if you withdraw this general consent there is a lot of you know uh, opportunity for cbi to launch cases you know you can always uh, register a case in uh, delhi and you link it somehow with the accused persons like in case of this particular case lalu prasad jadhav was the central minister he was also in delhi so you can always this uh, there is a scope for launching an investigation somewhere else and then implicate the person who in a state who which the state which has withdrawn the consent so i don't think this is going to have a, a very big bearing yes of course i mean new investigations hmm. which is state specific and the person is in the state itself and it has no ramification in any other part of the state that cannot be launched without the state's consent but in this particular case uh, the investigation will continue despite state government withdrawing the consent first thing okay. second thing as far as nitish kumar's stand is concerned uh, he has always he has consistently made it clear and his party that when he uh, uh, withdrew from the rjd led alliance in 2017 and from then onward to 5 years nothing has happened hmm. so what he has been saying he, this matter was raised in 2017 hmm. just to break that alliance and now that he hmm. has joined hands with rjd yeah. the same tool is being implemented to break this alliance you know this is the narrative his party has built all along 
and this is the narrative all opposition Correct. leaders are making so, that so there is a concerted while we'll effort have to, to see when uh, that confirmation them. comes of bihar actually withdrawing the general consent as far as cbi is concerned the opposition still maintains that the timing is questionable this is vendetta politics i will give the final word to guru guru the criticism against your party today is we'll really have to see how the investigation goes that's happening parallelly but the criticism against your party is that because nitish kumar decided to walk away and leave the bjp behind this is just a rattled and frustrated bjp trying to create differences and trying to break the numbers as far as the mahagathbandhan is concerned because you yourself are unsure as far as your future in bihar is concerned aridma i want to make one thing clear fight against corruption is a sine qua non for good governance if you want good governance if you want transparency if you want efficient delivery of public services corruption is something with which you cannot compromise and like i said prime minister has given a clarion call from the rampants of red fort but look at the audacity of these parties rashtri janta dal mr nitish kumar he never applied for this withdrawal of consent before what is the reason behind it i think it is mr nitish kumar who has to now give an explanation not only to the people of bihar but also to the people of country that this flip flopping this utilization of indian politics this is something which uh, we must uh, held nitish kumar accountable for and for my friends from the congress party who are repeatedly accusing us of uh, misusing the institution i want to remind them their senior leader former president of india pranam mukherjee in his book the coalition years he has written about it former home secretary gk pillai has written about it former senior ips officer arvis mani has written about it there are so many accusation that it was the congress party who was repeatedly misusing the institution okay. and as far as we are concerned we are not going to compromise on corruption you have the example of mr ishwarappa from karnataka there were allegations hmm. and then we saw him resigning from the post of minister there will be no compromise when it comes to corruption pratham okay no compromise as far as corruption is concerned is the word coming in from the bjp this is a rattle bjp is what the opposition is There's saying so we really have to see how this plays out unfortunately i've completely run out of time i appreciate all the guests who took out the time to join us this evening we're now shifting our focus to the other big story that we're tracking this evening which is the crackdown on madarsas that continues as far as assam is concerned have already asked all the district superintendents of police and the intelligence agencies to find out uh, where all the madrasas are located and how many of those are registered and how many are unregistered specifically for unregistered madrasas we are first trying to compile the list of their teachers and others and then we will see what action needs to be taken second madrasa we have evicted because of the fact that those institution were not running at madrasa but as a terrorist hub whenever we will get complaint we have closed down government madrasa we are evicting madrasa wherever there is a complaint of fundamentalism is there what is being seen as a pattern two more people linked to the al qaeda indian subcontinent and anarsul bangla team were arrested in assam's barpeta district for allegedly indulging in jihadi activities the two accused identified as akbar ali and abu kabul azad were detained from a house in sorbog area of the district earlier in july as many as 17 people including six madrasa teachers were also held for allegedly having links with terror groups they were detained for their alleged links with global terror outfits including al qaeda indian subcontinent and the bangladesh based ansurla bangla team remembering on the 22nd of august the chief minister himant biswa sarma had announced that they had made some special sops regarding imams who are not from assam the assam chief minister himant biswa sarma has also said that the northeastern state of india has now become a hotbed of islamic fundamentalism with five modules having links with various terror outfits which have resulted in madrasas without documentation being bulldozed as well so the question that we want to get answers to this evening is 
what really is the nexus that's playing out on the ground. But first, I actually want to give you a timeline of what are these various arrests that have been made. On the 28th of August, the Assam police arrested two terrorist suspects in the Barapeta. Suspects allegedly provided logistical aid to terrorists. Let's go back a couple of days. On the 26th of August, a Madarsa teacher, Hafizur Mufti, was arrested in Golpara again. Cleric at that time was accused of spreading terror propaganda. Let's go back. On the 25th of August, the cops had arrested terror suspect Abdus in again in Golpara. Then, on the 20th of August, two suspects, Abdus and Jalauddin Sheikh, arrested in Golpara once again. If you go back to the month of July, as many as 11 suspects were arrested in Morigao, Barpeta, Gohati and Golpara as well. On the 27th of July, the cops had arrested again a cleric, Mufti Mustafa in Morigao. The cleric used the madarsa as a safe house for terrorists and the cleric also handled funds for sleeper cells in Assam. Then, on the 27th of July, the cops arrested terror suspect Abbas Ali from Golpara. Again, the allegation at this time was that the suspect was accused of sheltering terrorists at his home. Let me just talk to you as far as these areas are concerned where this activity is now actually seeing a pattern. Look at the map that I'm putting out behind me. One, of course, is Morigao, as I pointed out. There is Barapeta, there is Golpara, and there is Guwahati as well. But let's also talk to you about the action that we've seen on the ground. As far as what the Assam police has now told us and the pattern in these arrests that we are seeing as well. The Assam police has arrested as many as eight Muslim clerics. Now, what is the modus operandi that we are seeing emerge as a pattern on the ground? Let's break down those details as well. Now, what we're understanding from officials is that many of these suspected clerics actually hail from Bangladesh. What we're also picking up is that these radical clerics entered Assam in 2019 for a dharm sabha and then they just decided to stay back. The accusation is that these imams who've been arrested, they held regular meetings to plan Anarsul Bangla operations as well. What we're also understanding is that these accused imams spearheaded propaganda and indoctrination operations as well. What is even more worrying is that multiple homegrown Anarsul operatives have now been arrested. The accused imams, the allegation against them is they provided shelter to Anarsul agents in Assam as well. So is this now becoming a security threat as far as the country is concerned? The question that we're asking this evening is who actually nurtured this nexus? You can use our hashtag and get involved. The hashtag is Assam Terror. Let me also now introduce our guests who are joining us to take this discussion forward. We have Pramod Swami, spokesperson of Assam BJP. We also have Lieutenant General Raj Kadyan, former Deputy Chief of Indian Army. We are hoping to be joined by a spokesperson of the Assam Congress shortly as well. Lieutenant General Raj Kadyan, let me first begin with you. This pattern that is now emerging is proving to be extremely dangerous as far as the activities on the ground. As far as the debate on Madarsas is concerned, the question that is being raised by the state government is that one, is education even being provided as far as these Madarsas are concerned? And more importantly, if education is not being provided, what are these Madarsas being used for? And when there is checks happening, why are no documents being able to be provided? Ritima, a person's thinking in life can be influenced at three levels. First is in the family, second is in the school, and third is in the society. After, after, out of these three, the easiest to identify and control is the school. If jihadism is being taught in the school, whether it is a madrasa or a patshala, that is an anti-national activity, and all action must be taken by the country to stop it. Whether the school is demolished, that's only a building. But we must make every effort as the teachers keep a strict watch and make sure that these school institutions or education institutions are not used to spread terrorism. Assam is a vulnerable state because if you go back in the history, uh, SMEs people were Bhadar Lok, they wanted people to come and work in their farm. Mm. So a lot of Bengalis that time before partition also 
came and settled down. Barpeta district that you are talking about, uh, the, the, the religious denomination is about 70% Muslims and 29 Hindus. That is not to say that every Muslim is a potential True. terrorist, hmm. but the environment provided in that community is perhaps more uh, destructive to the national security and every effort must be made by all agencies, police, the NIA, the security agencies, to ensure that the madrasas are not being issued. Pramod Swami, I want to actually begin by understanding what really is the problem? How are these either illegal constructions or the lack of documentation not raising enough red flags? As I pointed out, some of this movement dates back to 2019 when we saw these clerics come in as part of a dharm sabha and then never really left. How is this not raising red flags? Hello. We can hear Hello, you, Pramod yeah. Swami. Go ahead. Yeah, you are asking to me. Hello. Yes, Pramod Swami, Hello? please go ahead. Hello. Yeah. Pramod Swami, can you hear us? Okay, we'll just try and reestablish. Or somebody else. Okay. Uh, this, the question was to spokesperson of the Assam BJP, Pramod Swami. I'm not sure if he's able to hear us, but we'll try and reestablish that connection with him. Apurva Kumar Bhattacharji, spokesperson of the Assam Congress, also now joining us on the broadcast. Why should there not be action as far as these madrasas are concerned? First, the issue was whether even education is being imparted in these madrasas. Now the question is, what is these madrasas actually being used for? If they're being used for illegal terror activities, why should we not see a crackdown? You see, this, there is nothing to contradict if madrasas are not providing education. And in the same time, if the madrasas are used for jihadis activities, why the government will, is silent? Is it not the duty of the government to find out who, which madrasas is not offer, providing education to the student? Instead of providing education, they are providing unlawful activities however, for promotioning, encouraging mm. the Muslim children for jihadi activities, anti-national activities. The police has that information. They should not be wait for a single moment. It's a matter, matter of the nation's security. So I don't know why the government is ma making more adv advertisement. Pramod Swami, the question that is being raised now is if there is enough evidence as far as what is happening in these madrasas, what is causing the delay in raising these red flags? How are we seeing these madrasas with multiple arrests that are being made week after week still continuing? Yeah. But you uh, see that the the already Moringa or Barpeta mein jo hai, ऐसे जो मदरसे जो चल रहे हैं जिनको आतंकवादी गतिविधियों में जिनकी संलिप्तता के प्रमाण जो है असम सरकार को मिले हैं उनके ऊपर में कार्रवाई भी की गई है ऐसा नहीं कि उन पे ऊपर कार्रवाई नहीं की गई है लेकिन ये एक जनता की भी एक ड्यूटी है एक हमारा सोशल और सोशल भी हमारा एक कर्तव्य है कि हम लोगों को अवेयर करें इस विषय में जैसे कि हमारे प्रधान माननीय प्रधानमंत्री श्री नरेंद्र मोदी जी कहते भी हैं कि एक हाथ में कुरान और दूसरे हाथ में कंप्यूटर और इसी से हम जो है सोच को बदल सकते हैं लेकिन ये जो मदरसे हैं जहां ये आतंकवादी पनप रहे हैं जयादी पनप रहे हैं वहां इस तरह से उनका माइंड वॉश किया जाता है कि उनके हाथ में एक हाथ में जो हम कंप्यूटर और कुरान की बात करते हैं वहाँ कंप्यूटर की जगह एक के ने ले ली है और ये सारा जो है अलकायदा के साथ में जो इनके लिंकअप है और जो अन्य टेररिस्ट ऑर्गेनाइजेशन के साथ में इनके लिंकअप है ये स्टेब्लिश हुए हैं और स्टेब्लिश होने के बाद में ही इनके ऊपर में कार्रवाई की गई है तो आ, ये गवर्नमेंट जो है एडमिनिस्ट्रेशन है वो अपना काम कर रहा है लेकिन राजनीतिक दलों और सामाजिक जो संगठन है या जो 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 सोशल संगठन है उनकी भी एक जिम्मेदारी बनती है कि वो एक अवेयरनेस पैदा करें कि इस तरह की जो जिहादी एक्टिविटीज में जो लोग हैं जैसे कि अगर अगर कोई ऐसे मदरसों में कोई बाहर से लोग आते हैं 
तो आसाम सरकार ने ये कहा है कि आसाम पुलिस ने कहा है कि उनकी जानकारी जो है आसाम पुलिस को दी जाए कि कौन से कौन से लोग बाहर से आ रहे हैं और मदरसों का पंजीयन और निरीक्षण ये भी जरूरी है कुछ प्राइवेट मदरसे हैं जिनको जिनको रजिस्टर नहीं थे तो उनको भी रजिस्ट्रेशन करने के लिए सरकार ने आदेश दिए हैं और सवाल खड़ा होता है ये सही बात है जो आप कह रहे हैं कि कलेक्टिव एक काम होना चाहिए लोगों की भी रिस्पॉन्सिबिलिटी होनी चाहिए पर सवाल अब यही खड़ा हो रहा है कि इलीगल जो मदरसाज हैं ये बने कैसे पहले प्लेस में पहली चीज वो दूसरी चीज ये है कि कोई एक मदरसा नहीं है काफी सारे हैं जब कोई चेक्स होते हैं तो इनके पास डॉक्यूमेंट्स नहीं होते हैं भारतीय तो ये है नहीं तो ये इनको पना कौन दे रहा है ये सवाल है देखिए देखिए ये 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 इस समस्या से आसाम आज से नहीं जूझ रहा है इस समस्या से घुसपैठ की समस्या से आसाम पहले से जूझ रहा है और कुछ ऐसे लोग थे जिन्होंने उनको कागज बनवाए उनको मदद की वैसे आ, उनके जो हमदर्द लोग हैं इसी इसी की वजह से उनको यहाँ पना मिली लेकिन जब यहाँ सत्ता बदली है और आ, देश की सत्ता जब माननीय प्रधानमंत्री श्री नरेंद्र मोदी जी के हाथों में आई और यहाँ पहला ट्रम सर्वानंद जी और सेकेंड ट्रम में जब हेमंत विश्व शर्मा जी की सरकार जो है ये सरकार शासन में आने के बाद में इनके खिलाफ हमने सख्ती की है और उस शक्ति का ही नतीजा आपको आज सामने को देखने मिल रहा है जो चीजें पहले प्रकट नहीं होती थी वो प्रकट हो रही है और जिहादी एक्टिविटीज में इनका इन्वॉल्वमेंट जो है वो पहले भी था लेकिन पहले की सरकार जो थे इनके प्रति एक सॉफ्ट नीति थी वोट बैंक की वजह से वो एक सॉफ्ट नीति वो अपना के रखे हुए थे उस सॉफ्ट नीति की वजह से ये चीजें प्रकाश में नहीं आई थी लेकिन अब आप सारी चीजें है पब्लिक डोमेन में है और सरकार जो कर रही है वो भी आपको अच्छी तरह से that's coming in from Pramod Bunny Swami he is saying this is not a problem that is new as far as Assam is concerned at least the BJP is taking steps they are now putting at least SOPs in place that somebody who is not from Assam will have to have a sense of verification there will be a portal that will be made as well they are asking for collective responsibility as far as the citizens are concerned if these problems were known for everybody why didn't the previous governments do anything pehla baat hai ki Pramod Swami ji bhi pehle government mein hissedar the और ये सरकार की बात नहीं है अब आ रहे हैं गवर्नमेंट में हिस्सा नहीं था गवर्नमेंट में नहीं था मैं गवर्नमेंट में नहीं था मैं मैं कांग्रेस पार्टी में अरे हो भी आज छोड़ दो यार पार्टी में हिस्सेदार आप गलत बोल रहे हैं बाकी बोलिए आप दिल्ली और दिसपुर में जो भाजपा की सरकार है ये क्या घोड़ा के घास काटने के लिए सरकार बनी है ना जनता के सामने जाकर नौकर के करने के लिए अरे जहाँ पर जहाँ भी है उसको उस पर तो फोड़ दो उस पर कड़ी से कड़ी कानून कानूनी कार्रवाई करो उन पर अब माना कर रहे कि वहां पर कानूनी कार्रवाई नहीं करो जनता के सामने जाकर नोटों की बात बहुत हो गया अब तो कुछ देश के लिए हित के लिए सोचा करो जनता आपको कोई बाधा नहीं दिया ना कांग्रेस पार्टी आपको माना चाहती ये मत करो ये हमारे मित्र है ये तो सुनते सुनते आ गया है आपको अभी आपको अभी आप ही अल्पसंख्यक को ज्यादा कदर करने लग गए हो थोड़ी दिन बाद आपने बैठाएगा एक जगह पर वहां से एवेक्शन करके जनता को बोलेगा कि यहाँ पर भी घुसपेटिया आ गया अरे घुसपेटिया हो जिहादी हो इलीगल माइग्रेंट हो किसी से भी कोई दोस्ती का बात नहीं रखा है आपने आप क्यों डरते हो तब क्या वोट बैंक आपके वोट बैंक खत्म हो जाएगा इसीलिए देखिए हम कोई पोलराइजेशन की राजनीति नहीं करते ध्रुवीकरण की राजनीति नहीं करते हमारा इस मुद्दे पर स्पष्ट नीति है कि नेशन फर्स्ट पार्टी सेकंड इंडिविजुअल थर्ड अरे पहले तो इसीलिए नेशन को अच्छा अच्छा उनको रिस्पॉन्ड तो कर दीजिए आप बीच में बंद बोलिए आप जवाब दीजिएगा ना 
राष्ट्र राष्ट्र की एकता अखंडता राष्ट्र की सार्वभौमिकता के हिसाब से हम कोई समझौता नहीं कर सकते ये हमारी सपस्ट नीति है लेकिन कांग्रेस पार्टी के जो की जो घुसपेटियों के प्रति जो प्रेम है वो सबको पता है क्योंकि आसाम अकॉर्ड 1985 में हुआ था राजीव जी ने अकॉर्ड किया था उस अकॉर्ड के थ्री डी थे डिटेक्ट डिलीट एंड रिपोर्ट पैंतीस चालीस साल तक आपकी सरकार नहीं सरकार थी दिल्ली में भी थी आसाम में थी आपने फर्स्ट डी डिटेक्ट तक नहीं किया तो ये आसाम में जो घुसपेटियों को लेकर के जो आपकी जो राजनीति थी और आज आपके जो तीन एम पी जीत के आए हैं वो भी वहीं से जीत के आए हैं जहाँ से वो घुसपेटी की बहुसंख्यक बहुसंख्यक की तादाद में है बाकी तो पूरे आसाम में आपको आसाम की जनता ने रिजेक्ट किया है अभी हाल ही में गुवाहाटी म्यूनसिपल कॉरपोरेशन के चुनाव हुए साठ सीटों पे साठ सीटें थी आप एक सीट भी नहीं जीत पाए जनता समय समय पे अपना निर्णय भी दे रही है वोट बैंक इज कंसर्न बट आई वॉन्ट टू ब्रिंग इन लेफ्टिनेंट जनरल कादियान हुज बीन पेशेंटली वेटिंग बैक इन द कॉन्वर्सेशन टूडे द वरिंग पैटर्न दैट इज इमर्जिंग इज दर ऑल दीज इमाम against them is that they were using the madrasas which essentially was supposed to be for imparting education as terror hubs there was shelter that was given logistic help that was given is there a new modus operandi that we're seeing emerge now lieutenant general kadian yeah lady ma the question we are discussing today is extremely important it concerns the national security how we can check the spread of al qaeda indian subcontinent along with the uh, modules which are there in bangladesh today we should not relegate the discussion into intra party or inter party dispute True. which party did when is a separate matter but politics should be subservient to the need of national security government perhaps is doing enough but government alone can control cannot control the issue the society has to be part of the efforts of course the national security agencies the nia and the police and others are acting on it but it is a responsibility of all of us so let us not dilute the importance of the subject which deal with national security by squibbling into party what congress did what okay. bjp is doing no but i was just essentially did. trying to understand are we seeing a new modus operandi yeah if the question is for mere dima yes 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 what for you i am again sir. repeating that al qaeda is sparing no effort to spread its tentacles and they can spread only if they find some fertile ground where they want to spread hmm. and if that is happening in assam because of More than a century-old problem, the migrants used to come to work in the farm, True. and they now become settlers in Assam. So we must make every effort. The, the country must make every effort. Assam government, yes, of course, because they are on the ground there. But to say that which party did what at what time is, is diverting the issue, is diluting the importance okay. of the issue. So matters of national security should 